getting a variable from another script in Unity can be pretty straightforward. In fact, even if you're only just getting started with the basics of Unity, chances are you've already created a public reference variable before and connected it by dragging an object or a script or a component to it in the inspector. However, as you start to build your own game, knowing how to connect different variables, scripts and objects together in the right way can be extremely challenging. In this video, you'll learn the basics of accessing a variable on another script, when to use one method over another, as well as some best practice tips to help keep your project clean and easy to manage. So how do you get a variable from another script in Unity? Before you can access another script's variables, you'll need to have a reference to the instance of the class or the component that the variable is in. Once you have that, you'll be able to access the script's public variables and functions by using the dot operator. So how can you get a reference to the script you want to work with? The simplest way to get a reference to another script or component in Unity is to create it manually in the inspector. This works by creating a public or serialized reference to the type of component or the type of script that you want to connect. Marking the reference as public will display a field of that type in the inspector. Alternatively, serializing the field has the exact same effect, except that unlike a public field, a serialized field is visible in the inspector but can't be accessed by other scripts. Then all you need to do is drag and drop the instance of the script or the component that you want to connect to the public field, or use the circle select button to choose from matching components in your scene. This method of creating connections works with any reference type variables, such as other components, game objects and scripts that exist together in your scene. It's generally a very efficient method for creating ready-made connections, such as when connecting parts of a prefab together, for example. However, in most cases, it's unlikely that you'll be able to set up the connections that occur between different objects in advance using the inspector, which means that you'll need to be able to get another object's scripts and variables in code. GetComponent is a generic function in Unity that will search for and return a specific type of component or script from a game object which is useful as it allows you to create connections between objects when they interact. But what is a generic function? Regular functions are designed to accept and return specific data types, such as a particular type of value or reference, which means that the body of the function knows what kind of data it will receive and how to deal with it. A generic function, on the other hand, is designed to work with an unknown data type, a generic type, indicated by the capital T in angled brackets. When calling a generic function, you'll need to specify in the angle brackets what type of data the function should use. In the getComponent function, this will determine what type of component the function will search for and what type of component is returned if one is found, which can then be used to set a reference. GetComponent works by returning the first component of a particular type as attached to the object the function is called from. Or, if you want to get the second, third, or multiple components from a game object, get components will fill an array with any components of the same type, allowing you to choose a specific one or work with all of them at once. By default, get component works on the game object you call it on. Alternatively, you can call get component on a different game object if you have a reference to it. But what if your object isn't one object? What if it's several? It's not unusual to build a part of your game using multiple game objects instead of just one which means that if you want to find a component or an object in your game, it might not actually be on that object. It might be on one of its children instead. GetComponent in children works in the same way as GetComponent, except instead of only checking the specific game object, it checks any child object as well. Meaning that GetComponent in children can be used to search the object you call it on and any of its children too, while GetComponent in parent will check the target object and any of its parent objects. This can be extremely useful for getting components on the root of a game object, since so long as one of the objects in between doesn't return a matching component first, components on the root object, when using getComponentInParent, can always be found there. Because getComponent essentially searches each game object, and in some cases its child objects and parents too, it's generally considered to be quite slow. As a result, it's usually a bad idea to call getComponent frequently, such as during every frame in updates, or excessively during one frame, where multiple get component calls could cause a noticeable drop in performance. However, even though it can be a slow function, there are many tasks for which get component is simply the best tool for the job. It's extremely useful for creating new connections between objects when they interact, even if you don't know if the other object has a particular type of component or not. When using get component to set a reference variable, 
If the script you're looking for can't be found on the object, nothing is returned and the variable stays null, meaning that when you try to use it, you'll get an error. As a result, it can sometimes be helpful to check that the getComponentCall was successful by checking if the variable is null before trying to do anything with it. This works, but it can be inconvenient to separately set and check if the component was successfully found or not, particularly if all you want to do is call a function in a script if it exists on the object. Helpfully, there's now an easier way to do it. TryGetComponent, which was introduced in Unity 2019, allows you to both check and set a reference in a single if statement. This works because the return type of TryGetComponent is a boolean that returns true or false, depending on if the component was found. While both the generic type to look for and the location where the reference will be stored, if it's found, are determined using the function's parameter and the out keyword, which can be used to set an existing variable or to create a new temporary variable, either of which can then be used in the body of the if statement, but only if the component was actually found. If not, the if statement is ignored and nothing happens. For this reason, TryGetComponent is extremely useful for checking if another object has a particular type of behavior before trying to do anything with it. For example, you could use TryGetComponent to see if an object is damageable before trying to damage it. However, for GetComponent and TryGetComponent to work at all, you'll need to have a reference to the object that you want to call it on first. So how can you get a reference to another object in your scene? Most of the time, if you want to reference another variable in another script on another object, then chances are it's because those two objects are interacting in some way. For example, you might have clicked on the object, touched it or collided with it, in which case the physical interaction will usually provide an opportunity to get a reference to that object. For example, the onCollisionEnter event is called when an object with a rigid body touches another object's collider. The collision data that's generated includes information about the collision such as points of contact, the relative velocity, and importantly, a reference to the object that was hit, which can then be used with the getComponent function to get a script from that object. However, occasionally, you'll need to create a connection between objects that don't otherwise interact. So how can you? One option is to simply search for an object in the scene. For example, you can find a game object by its name, which will return a game object matching an exact string. However, while this method is easy and it can be very convenient, there are a few drawbacks when finding an object in this way. For example, if the name of the object changes at any time, the script will no longer be able to find it. And if you have multiple objects of the same name in the scene, there's no guarantee which object will be returned. What's worse is that it can be very inefficient, since Unity will have to search all of the objects in the scene to find the one you're looking for. An alternative option is to find a game object using its tag, which can be useful for finding a very specific object, such as the player or the main camera. Finding an object using its tag is generally more efficient than finding an object by its name. However, in both cases, just like with getComponent, it's usually better to avoid using any kind of search function frequently or excessively. Instead, if you do need to use a find function to get another object, try to use it as little as possible by caching the reference you get for use later on. Even though it can be inefficient, Find with tag is a convenient way of getting a reference to unique game objects. But making a tag for every game object that you want to be able to easily find could quickly become hard to manage. What's more, once you've used a tag to find an object, you're still going to want to access specific variables and information on that object to use with other scripts in your game. Meaning that every time a script wants to access the player's health or the score, for example, you'll need to search the object for that component, which, as your game gets bigger, can cause problems with performance as more and more scripts use search-based functions for what is essentially static information. So what's the alternative? Global variables, while not a specific technology in Unity, generally refers to project-wide data that's accessible from any script via a single point of access. Unlike local variables on individual scripts, which may have many different instances, each with their own values on multiple unique game objects, a global variable's purpose is to provide universal access to important scripts, data, and functions that other scripts may need to use. There are a lot of reasons why you might need to use a global variable, but typically you'll find them most useful for connecting objects and systems that need to work together but don't otherwise interact with each other, such as the player's health and the health bar that displays it, for example. So how do you make a global variable? One simple method of creating a global variable is to declare a variable as static, 
which works by adding the static keyword. A static variable in Unity is simply a variable that's shared by all instances of that class. This means that even if there are multiple instances of a class on multiple different objects in a scene, a static variable declared in that class will hold the same value across all of them. And so long as it's also public, a static variable can be accessed from any other script by simply referencing the name of the class itself, meaning that you don't need to search for the object a static variable is on to get a reference to it. This can be extremely useful for creating global references to specific things, and a common way to do this is using the singleton pattern. A singleton is a globally accessible instance of a class. It's a class that can be attached to a game object in a scene, but that holds a static reference to itself. What this does is allow any other script in the game to access the instance of the class via the static reference, without needing to search for it by its tag or name. While the reference to the class is static, the class itself is not, meaning that while the reference can only ever point to one instance of the script, it's possible to have more than one instance of the singleton in the scene, which is why it's important to make sure that there's only ever one instance of the singleton by checking to see if the static reference, if there is one, matches. Then if it doesn't, the script knows it's a duplicate and it can delete itself. Static variables and singletons can be very convenient, as they allow you to create global variables easily. However, overusing statics, or using them in the wrong way, can also cause you problems. Statics can cause dependency issues, as each reference is hard-coded into any script that uses them, while using statics or singletons for the wrong thing can make your project difficult to manage later. As a general rule of thumb, you really only want to use statics for truly unique data, when you know for sure that you're only going to need one of whatever it is you're making static. Otherwise, you may put yourself in a position where it's difficult to change how your project works later on. For example, it might make sense to store the player's health in a static variable, making it easily accessible to player scripts, enemies, and the UI. However, if you later decide you're going to add a second player, you'll need to change how every script that touches the player health value works. Because statics are a direct reference, they're not inherently modular, meaning it can be very difficult to use them for anything else. So how do you create global data that is modular? Scriptable objects are basically assets that exist in your project but can be referenced from your scene. They work like global instances and can be incredibly useful for managing data that will be referenced by objects in a scene but that don't need to exist inside of it. So how do they work? Even if scriptable objects are new to you, you will have probably already used a similar workflow before. Audio sources are game object components that exist on objects in a scene, while audio clips are assets, data containers of a certain format that exist in the project. Audio sources reference audio clips to play them, but the audio clip can easily be replaced with a different audio clip asset, a different container of the same type, without changing how the audio source works. Scriptable objects work in the same way, where a script in your scene can reference a type of data in your project meaning that the exact instance the script refers to can be easily changed. To create a scriptable object template, you'll need to create a new c -sharp script that inherits from the scriptable object class. In the body of your class, you can store a complete set of data, public functions, or even just a single value. Finally, so that you can create instances of your scriptable object type, you'll need to add the create asset menu attribute. This will allow you to create new scriptable object assets by right-clicking in your project window. Then, in your game, whenever you want to reference a scriptable object asset, you can declare an asset of that type and simply choose the instance of the scriptable object from your project's assets. But how is that useful? If you still need to drag and drop the scriptable object reference to the script in your scene, how is this method any different from creating a manual connection to an object in the scene in the inspector? Because scriptable objects exist as assets, their data and values are persistent, meaning that it's possible to connect a script to a scriptable object instance before the scene runs. For example, if you were to create a prefab object for the player's health display, you'd be able to connect it to a scriptable object instance of the player's health value. Both the player object and the health display are referencing the same piece of data, the health value, but neither is dependent on the other meaning that the health display doesn't even need the player to exist to read the health value, since the scriptable object asset acts as a layer of abstraction between them, reducing dependencies between objects. And if you wanted to add a second player later on, 
you can simply duplicate the health value and point a second health display towards it without changing how the script works. For more information on how to create your game's architecture using scriptable objects, try Ryan Hipple's Unite Austin talk. You'll find a link in the video description. Now I want to hear from you. How are you connecting variables in your game? Are you dragging and dropping references in the inspector? Or are you using search functions, statics, or scriptable objects to create connections while your game runs? And what have you learned about connecting scripts in Unity that you know others will find useful? Whatever it is, let me know by leaving a comment, like this video if you found it useful, and get subscribed for more videos from me. I'll see you next time.